Um, most of you didn't say you had fire bottles, and Sam, you heard the story. Fire bottles in your cars. I used to tell this every year at Sears Point. Oh, no. <laughs> Imagine on a Sunday afternoon you're driving down the freeway in whatever town you live in. You come across an accident. Grandma had her crown Vic hit by a tractor. Flipped. There's two little kids in the back seat strapped in. The car catches on fire. You don't have a fire bottle with you. What do you do? Hopefully you stop. Now, does everybody understand in the state of Texas and Oklahoma and just about every state, they have what they call the um, Good, Samaritan. Good Samaritan Act, that if you stop and render assistance, as long as you're not a doctor, uh, some sort of medic or something like that, you can't be sued. You can do everything you can to help that individual, and please do. But let's say you come across that Crown Vic, it's upside down, Grandma's in it, two kids in the back seat, and it catches fire. You don't have a bottle. What are you going to do? Throw dirt on it, take your beer and junk it. What are you going to do? You're not going to do anything. I will guarantee you, you're going to have a heck of a time sleeping for the next year. Okay? The other scenario, you do have a 10 pounder, which costs you 35, 40 bucks at Home Depot or Lowe's. Okay? Pick one up. Let's say you attempt to put the fire out and you can't put it out and you can't save them. You know what? What's going to happen? You're going to lose sleep for six months. Okay, the last scenario, you have a bottle, you put the fire out, you save the two kids and then the grandma, you're going to go to sleep for about the next two years with a big smile on your face. Buy a bottle and carry it. Plus another benefit, your car might catch fire. Okay? Okay, that's just like a little story I like to tell because, you know, for 35, 40 bucks you can save somebody's life. Um, as far as a racetrack, when you get out on the corner, there's a couple of things to do as far as bottles. Uh, you know, we use cold fire and we also use dry chem. Talking about both of them, make sure the gauge is in the green. Now on the cold fire, it doesn't have to be in the green. And let me explain. Uh, last weekend we were out here and someone called in and said my bottle's discharged and so and so. On cold fire, you can keep popping that bottle and keep popping it for a week on and off, on and off. It won't lose pressure. The dry chem, once you pop a dry chem bottle, it's a dead item. It's dead. Okay? Even if you don't use all the chemical in it, it's going to lose the pressure. The dry chem gets up in the seal and it's going to lose pressure. You need to ask for a new bottle. On cold fire, you can keep using that thing until it runs out of air or fluid. Okay? So on a cold fire bottle, it doesn't necessarily have to be in the green. When we had Champ Car at Long Beach and Laguna Seca for many years, I'd have all my firemen pop their cold fire bottles. And I'd have safety ties to make sure they were, they were good. The reason being, <clears throat> down at Long Beach one year, Mike, Mike Top and I were kind of fooling around when the mascot for the Long Beach hockey team was up on the wall. And he's trying to get the crowd going. This is before the race. So I popped my bottle, walked up, you know, pulled the pin, walked up and I was going to shoot him in the ass. Guess what? My gauge read in the green, and it was heavy, it was full of water. But the gauge was bad, there was no pressure in it. So from then on, I had all my guys checking the bottles. Don't do that to a dry cam. Again, once you pop a dry cam, it's a dead soldier. You can keep using it until it runs out of pressure or chemical, but don't expect it to work two hours later. Okay. Check your bottle when you get out green gauge. Um, make sure the hose isn't plugged up with mud because we we actually, you know, if you don't know, we work during the rain and there's mud out there and the bottle may have fallen over and may have been plugged up. If it's got dry mud in it, it isn't going to work. Uh, make sure the handle works correctly. Uh, make sure the hose isn't loose. Uh, just general good condition. Do not respond to a car even if it's two feet from your station without taking a bottle with you. Always expect the unexpected. It's going to happen. You guys know that when you look downstream, it's going to happen upstream. When you look upstream, something's going to happen downstream. When you least expect something to go down, and I'm saying first lap, pace lap, checkered flag lap, DEs, expect the worst. It will happen. Okay? The name of the game is to come here, have fun, play safe, and go home and have a good time.
pin back in? And when you pull a pin, I was going to get to that. When you pull a pin, keep it on your finger or put it in your pocket. And I'm as guilty as most. I, in fact, about three months ago, I had to look for a pin down at MSR Houston because I dropped it. I didn't throw it. Put it up, keep it on your finger or put it in your pocket whenever you pull a pin. And the easiest way to do it is twist it. Don't pull it, just twist it, it'll pop right off. Uh, dry chem gets in places cold fire won't. It'll get up and around and under, because it's gas, basically, where the cold fire doesn't. I think you need both. I'm not saying anything, but I'd like to have both. Here at TWS, we donated, I think, uh, eight or ten ten-pounders to, to TWS to use them because they only had five-pounders. So if you work here, you're going to have a ten-pounder and a five-pounder on the corners. Um, okay. As I said before, once you popped a bottle, it's dead. A dry can bottle is dead. Cold fire, you can keep using it over and over until it's out of fluid or out of pressure. The dry can, once you pop it, Ball control, control, Ted needs another bottle, another dry cam, because it's gonna it's gonna use up the pressure. It's gonna destroy that seal and you're not gonna have any pressure. One other thing, um, this is a little different than on the West Coast. We have three, four races a month out there. Here, Seabar might go two months, three months, and the, and the dry camps are sitting in a trailer. I don't have a problem with you when you get on, take your bottle or get on the corner, turn it upside down a couple of times. It loosens the powder up. It's been sitting for maybe three months in there, okay? It, it helps the powder get out a little quicker. You don't have to shake it up real bad. Yes, Bill? Previous history with uh, demonstrations from fire companies and all, Reference what you're saying for those people who mount them physically in their race I've cars. both ways. That's why I said I don't have a problem with it anymore. In your own vehicle. They're mounted vertically or sideways. When you go to an accident scene or you need your bottle, I'm sorry. Take it and pound it on the ground just prior yeah. to use it. Because okay. what happens is the powder is compacted to the point of you release the pressure. The pressure goes into the valve. It forms a... a, a pyramid at the very bottom of the bottle and that's all you're going to get out is air whatever the pressurization the nitrogen that's it that's why if you're going to mount them in your vehicle either mount them horizontally or turn them upside down for many years a lot of people say no don't shake them that that dry chem gets in the seal and i've gone back and forth over many many years and every, the majority of the people and the people that do recharge bottles say yeah Shake them up, or like he says, pound them on the ground, loosen up the dry cam. Um, I'm kind of glad you brought that up because it just reminded me of one thing. Uh, the purple K, now we don't have, I, I, yeah, I've seen one at the fuel, yeah. at the fuel tanks. The purple K on the rollaway parts. Do not charge the hose until you have the hose unwrapped. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you'll ever have it, but at, at Crescent, we've got a couple we use there. On the West Coast, they're all in the pit lanes, Laguna and, and Sears. But do not charge that hose until you get the hose undone. Once you charge it, you're never getting it off of that. It's a snake. It'll stay there. Okay? Just I just thought of that, sorry. But being from California, Purple K is considered a carcinogen, which it is. You don't want to sit and inhale this stuff all the time. Fiberglass and carbon fiber. Everybody knows you can't put it out with dry cam, right? We do. Does now. everybody know that? <laughs> you didn't know that. Carbon fiber and fiberglass create their own oxygen. Guess what dry cam does to the formula of fire? It takes the oxygen away. It doesn't work. It keeps building its own oxygen. You need water or cold fire. If you have a Corvette with an engine fire, he blew his engine, and you see the body catching fire. Hopefully you would have already called an alert. But fiberglass and carbon fiber, you cannot put out with dry care. Okay? What about the You may be in an event someplace where the vintage cars are running and some of the old Indy cars run alcohol. You cannot put, or methanol, you cannot put that out with dry cam also. 
The water changes the chemical composition. And that's the only thing you can use. If you are at a, um, let's say, a, well, we're going we're to have an IndyCar race this Houston year. Grand Prix. And uh, I, I don't know if you all know what the different signs are. If you see someone do this, that means hit me with water. I'm on fire. You can't see the well, you can't see the flame, and the way I like to describe it is, methanol fire is like reaching for that last piece of chicken in the back of the barbecue, and then realizing you're on fire here a couple seconds later, that's what happens. Okay, so if you see anybody do that, or the guy throwing his belts and getting out of the car real quick, hit him with water. Okay, that's the only thing you can use on methanol or alcohol. How are you going to know if it's a magnesium wheel? It'll be smart. It'll be bright. It's on fire. It's like, it, well, yeah. <laughs> never, never use water on magnesium. What will happen? <laughs> You'll have a fourth of July. It tends to blow up a little bit. And again, uh, some vintage cars, I don't think they're running any more wheels. They may have an intake manifold or something like that. It, it doesn't happen that often with us. Never use water on it. Never use water. And really, you can't use an ABC dry cam. So you got to use very uh, CO2 foam or D, which nobody has. Dry cam D. And sand. Yeah, you better have called an alert. If you have a fuel spill, let's say a car has a hard impact with another car or a corner station and the bladder gets punctured, uh, do not try to delete or dilute the, the oil, I mean the gas, with water, especially if it's on asphalt or concrete. All you're going to do is add to this, the problem, the situation. Okay? So if you're working in the pit lane or you're out on a corner and a car stops on track and he's got a fuel leak, don't don't try to spray it with water. You're going to create more of a nuisance and more of a problem than you were just taking care of it. Just stand by with dry cam. Hopefully you call an alert. Well, you guys saw when they punctured the tanks. Okay. If you would have sprayed water on it, you just would have added that so, much more. So the cold fire doesn't work on a fuel uh, fuel spill fire. It's it's basically it's water. It all it does is add to it, and it'll spread the surface where the fuel goes. It will not affect it. One thing about dry cam, if you come on a scene and let's say the fuel bladder is uh, exploded and fuel's gotten on the driver and the driver's on fire, you can shoot someone with dry cam. But, and hopefully they're conscious, you need to let them know don't breathe. Because dry chem does the same thing to a human as it does to a fire. It takes the oxygen away. How many people have tasted dry chem? How long did you taste it? For about a week, right? Okay. And when you pop a dry chem, hopefully you're upstream from the wind. <laughs> hopefully. It can't always be, be done. But let's say you, you, there's an incident on track, a couple of cars get together and a little fire <laughs> starts. You protect yourself first. You don't want to be upstream. You want the car between you and the oncoming traffic. And if the wind's coming this way, you've got to pop that in the wind. So hold your breath too. Okay. Is there a hold your breath hand signal? <laughs> <laughs> I, it, it's just common sense that if I'm out there with the corner worker and I see him, he's got the pit out and I see a fire, I'm assuming he's popping the bottle. And if I can't get upstream from him, I'm going to turn my back or... Well, it communicates to the driver. Is there oh, yeah. Well, no. You, you just yell at him. Just yell at him. And like I said, hopefully he's conscious. You probably won't listen with him. Yeah, most of yeah. We'll get to that, George. <laughs> Cool fire is good. Dry cam for an engulfed car or a big, you know, let's say a big engine fire. I'd rather use dry cam. Cool fire has its advantages. You can shoot it 20, 25 feet. It's a squirt gun. But it comes out in a solid spray. If you have a wide area, do it like a garden hose. It does coat the surface and that will not burn. Okay? 
if you let's say at, at the Houston Grand Prix and Gary remembers we had an experience what the first one yeah when Paul Tracy and Dan Clark got yeah. together you can shoot it through the fence and go 15 20 feet with it and put a fire out but it has its advantages and dry chem has its advantages also uh, I've already covered most of the stuff you know about uh, cold fire uh, again don't use it on a ground-based fuel fire all you're going to do is spread the fuel. You guys come before the drivers. How many drivers here? <laughs> you all, you've all heard it from me before. We've got a little pecking order. Corner workers come first. You and your partners are the most important people out there on the track. Next group is the oncoming traffic. You need to protect them, okay? And third and lastly is the guy that's upside down and on fire and screaming at you. Seriously, you have to protect the oncoming traffic before you attend to him. If you're working a corner by yourself, you do not leave that station until the last car passes your station and he's going in. He's already, the guy's already in trouble. You've already called an alert, rescue's on the way. You've got to protect the oncoming traffic. The, the bad thing about dry chem, it does get everywhere. Do not let an engine that's running inhale dry chem. You know why? You just cost the guy a motor. Okay, this stuff is very caustic and if, if the car inhales it, forget it. Uh, over the years, I've put more fires out just taking my gloves and patting them or taking dirt, you know. Dry cam gets every place. I've even told some of my firemen, when it's a real small fire, especially pit fire, hand the bottle to a crew member or the driver. <laughs> no, I'm serious. We've done, you know, here, you put it out. <laughs> He's going to have to spend 20 hours cleaning that car up. I'll tell you what. When you do pop a dry cam, unless the car is totally engulfed, one, two, let it work. What I mean by working, it takes the oxygen away. Give it a second or two to work. Check if it's still going. Go on to the other, walk around the other side of the engine compartment under the wheel well. Pop it once, twice. Let it, give it a couple seconds to work. Don't just sit there and dump it on. It's a waste of dry cam, no big deal, because the bottle's going to be dead anyway, but that guy's going to appreciate it when he gets his car home. Or we call it minimal uh, suppression. Seriously, one year at uh, the FIA Le Mans cars came to Laguna Seca, and I, I was working the uh, Mercedes-Benz pits. The Mercedes-Benz was leaving, leading the race about three quarters of the way through, and I hear on the radio that he's coming out of the corkscrew down the hill, coming through Ted on fire. He came in the pit lane, and uh, one of their guys had a, a foam bottle with uh, a big valve with about eight or ten holes in it, and uh, he popped it. They opened the, the rear, and he popped it on the thing, and nothing came out, so I jumped over the wall, and they yelled at me in German, and I don't know what they said, but I knew what they meant. Don't do it, don't do it, and I just gave it one quick, quick pop, put the fire out, they put the oil line back on, oil line. He finished the race, he won the race, they gave me a blue Mercedes flag and a nice pin because I didn't dump the bottle in the engine department. They didn't give you a Mercedes? No. <laughs> now you watch NASCAR, they love to empty the bottles, it's all for TV. Yes, no, don't, 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 minimal, minimal. Let, let the dry chem do its job, okay? You don't want dry chem of any sort ingested into a running motor at fur races. When you have an electrical fire in the driver's compartment, a little squirt cold fire, okay? Because you don't want the dry chem, especially if it's during the race or prior to the race, you don't want him going out with all that dry chem floating around in the interior. He's going to inhale that stuff. And I, I hate to say this, drivers, most of your systems won't work. Anybody question that? Nope. Uh, a lot of the systems on board these race cars will not work. Well, no, most of the time it won't work. The linkage is screwed up. The bottles, just, it's just, don't trust the onboard, okay, on a race car. 
been there too long. Yeah, and it hasn't, it hasn't been used. And, they're, they're and, and a lot of them only have a five pounder. Now, I'm not saying a five pounder can't put a car out. I've done it. But you've got a 10 pounder, go for the 10 pounder. Whichever one you pop, it's, it's going to be need to be replaced anyway, right? Because it's going to lose its pressure, right? Now, one advantage to an onboard fire system, if it works, a lot of times they have it going to the engine compartment and then also to where the fuel is. Not all cars have it set up that way, though. If it's a pro race, I guarantee you it's set up that way. Okay, and I guarantee you at a pro race, their bottles work. But for your weekend racer out here, I'm not going to say that more than 75% of them work, and that would be a high number. So yeah, on the prototypes, uh, and there, some of them are still wired this way. You hit the kill switch, you there goes the fire system. It will not work. True. Oh. Well, don't trust. That's <laughs> exactly. Don't trust, don't trust the fire system. Don't trust the fire system on a race car. get to a car that's had an impact, that hasn't had an impact, that just pulled off. <clears throat> what do you normally ask the driver as you're helping them out? Did you turn the electrics off? What does he always say? Yes. yes. <laughs> don't, don't, don't trust it. him. <laughs> Seriously. And they're always going to say yes. It's one of those questions where the answer to their mind is, I'm going to say yes. Does everybody know what they, the switches look like on a race car? It's normally a red knob that you push in, turn to the left, and actually pull out, and it's got a little tether. That disconnects the battery. The battery's not connected to anything once you pull that out. The car is totally off. If it's a DE and it's a passenger car, take the keys out of the ignition and put them on the passenger seat or put them on the dash. Okay, don't trust the driver. Let me explain why. If there is a fire and it's fuel fed, if the electrics are on, what's going to happen? You'll wait until that car runs out of fuel before you be able to approach it because it's going to keep feeding the fuel. Years ago in Florida, we had a Ferrari up against the wall and it went up against the wall where the electric switch was. And it was engulfed immediately. The driver got out, and they had to wait until the car ran out of fuel. Make sure the electric. Well, they had an example here, Pat, with the Corvette. Same thing. If the electrics, and a lot of times, like what happened there, you couldn't get the electrics off, or yeah, um, he didn't have a switch. Right. The battery was in the trunk, and we would have had to dig through all the junk he had in his trunk. That was a hell of a fire to try to fight, right? Uh, yes, sir. and that's that's actually why we bought our uh, probe and water on it. Yeah. That, that, so that that was a, a two prong attack there. First off, it was a Corvette. <laughs> fire glass. <laughs> Secondly, the ignition, the key was still on, and it was still pumping fuel. But they got it out. Was one of those where as long as the fob was still in there? Huh? It, the, the, the key, it was the key fob type. It didn't have a key switch and right. the push button oh, no, and uh, it just kept running the fuel pump kept running did the driver learn a lesson uh, i'm assuming so oh, okay let's hope so well, that's one point probably, probably oh, even, with the, even with the key off with the battery still connected right. oh yeah on, on, on a passenger car pump, you still have a frame it's only on a race car pumps will pump the horn will be all yes. kinds of things happen on you still have electrics in a passenger car to DE even when you take the key out because the battery is still connected. The airbags right. discharge. Yep. All yeah. kinds of other things happen. The car goes off and it's smoke, smoke pouring out from under the hood. I'm pretty sure it's on fire, but I heard you're not supposed to open the hood. Well, we're going to show you how to. Um, there's uh, one way to put a fire out under a hood. Best way is underneath the wheel wells. On a race car. Normally they don't have any type of material between the engine and the outside of the car. It's normally off and you can pop a bottle. On a passenger car it's a different story. <clears throat> a hood that's open from the front, it's always good to have two people, okay? One person that will slowly open the hood maybe that far and the other guy's got his nozzle 
and he's checking. He's looking for flames. So if there are flames under the hood, you pop the bottle once. If it needs it again, you pop it twice. But do not just open the hood. Okay? The reason being? Oxygen. If, yeah. if you guys do work for a race, or even like a Seymour race here, and, and you've got an hour lunch, which we very so well, I'm not going to say that, but <clears throat> take a couple of minutes to go and walk around the paddock, ask questions. You see a car you've never seen before with the electrics, ask the guy. This is a good example, he's saying with the BMW open wheel cars, <laughs> the second pull. So if you take it all the way out, the fire bottom electrics are off. I guess we'll take another bottle. Yeah, we need another bottle. Give the man another bottle. Here's another bottle. Well, that's great. <laughs> you want to work it back up to the top? The truck up yonder? Sure. Get your big lady. We would say if you pop a bottle and the rescue shows up, do not leave until they tell you they don't need your help anymore. You've already popped your bottle. And we'll use it. It's going to reignite, trust me. There's no sense of rescue having to pop another bottle. Also, when you're leaving a fire, keep it in sight. Do not turn your back to it. Shoot it and put a thumb over to the first. Just, just to put, make a little fan pattern. Okay. Because if you go with a straight stream, you could have a chance of splashing any product that's burning. So we always advise you. They actually have aerating nozzles for these. But anyway, let's walk okay. on in. What? It's burning. You approach. You turn it on. Activate it. Get that fan going. Walk right in there. Got to get a bit more involved with the water. Sweep it. You're doing a very, very good job. Very. And you can see how it's cooling. Yes, spray absolutely. You don't get that with dry cam. Very good. Back away. All right, we'll let you turn my. I don't want to get a trip here. Thank you.